This video is focused on cancer, which can ultimately be boiled down to the phrase that's seen up there in green, it's uncontrolled cell growth. Everything we've been talking about this chapter assumes that the process of cell division is going correctly. And to be honest, most often times it does, but there are problems that can happen with cell division that can lead to cancerous cells. So for starters, the, the first main point here is that cancer is just basically cell division out of control. The thing that we're going to focus on is um, actually one of the topics from one of the previous videos. Some of those regulators for the cell cycle are not functioning. So there's some kind of a problem with either the internal or the external regulators. Now if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, uh, you've got to watch the previous video because I'm not going to recover that stuff. We're going to talk about the, these things like as though you've watched that one and that you already understand what that's talking about. Because in order to understand the problem with cell division, you have to understand how it's supposed to work properly in the first place. So there's a video on internal and external regulators going into how they're supposed to function. Uh, but for starters, we'll begin looking at the internal regulators and things that can go wrong causing cancer in cells that have that kind of a problem. So if we are looking at internal regulators, the most common thing that uh, your book talks about anyway is a problem with what's called the P53 gene. What this gene does is it regulates some of the internal processes in the cell and it makes sure that the cell doesn't enter the cell cycle until all the chromosomes have been properly replicated. So it basically freezes things in interphase until S phase is finished. Once S phase is done and all of the chromosomes are properly copied, then the cell can begin moving through the steps of mitosis. But P53 makes sure that that happens. And you can imagine the problem that would be associated with this. If the cell starts dividing before S phase is finished, then the cell would be moving forward without all the chromosomes copied. It's guaranteed to pass on a problem to that next cell if it's not getting all of the chromosomes. The other thing that P53 does is if cell division begins before all of the chromosomes have been copied, it can send the cell into a process that's called apoptosis. I'll spell that one for you here. What apoptosis is called, and it's, it's also referred to as... Um, PCD, which is programmed cell death. Um, this is when it basically starts like a self-destruct process inside of the cell. The cell begins breaking down and it dies, and there are actually special cells in your immune system that come along and break these things down. Now, there are a lot of genetic mistakes that happen inside of your cells every day. Uh, it's estimated that there's about 10,000 genetic mistakes that are made in an adult human. And so um, because of that, like many of these problems are either fixed during G2 phase when the cell is checking the DNA or the cell goes into this process of apoptosis and uh, the cell begins to die and then your immune system actually comes along and breaks it down. There are other reasons for cells to enter um, apoptosis in adults. The, uh, the kind of astounding number that goes along with this is that it's estimated that between 50 and 70 billion with a B billion cells in an adult individual every day uh, die due to apoptosis. Now, it's not just because of genetic mistakes. There are other reasons that cells can undergo this process, but it's still a tremendous number. So I don't want you to think that uh, this is something that happens rarely. It's actually fairly common for this process to happen inside your body, and considering the number of genetic mistakes that are made every day, your body actually does catch a lot of them. But um, the last thing about the internal regulators, uh, problems with the p53 gene are actually something that's associated with higher cancer risk in individuals so if you're someone who has like a p53 gene that isn't functioning properly that's something that could put you at a higher risk for developing cancer because your body's not going through this checkpoint of making sure that everything's okay before the cell begins the process of division uh, the last thing to talk about are external regulators. This is how we get our, our two different types of cancer cells. But uh, before we get into that, I, I know I said I was going to recap things. I guess I lied. We'll do a very brief recap of external regulators. Uh, if you remember this picture from before, this is showing um, how cells recognize each other. So we start off with a Petri dish with three little colonies of cells inside of it. Those cells begin to divide until they fill the Petri dish. 
Once the petri dish is filled, uh, scientists remove some of the cells from the middle. This triggers the cells on the edge to start dividing again because they recognize that there are no longer any cells next to them. So they begin dividing until eventually the petri dish fills up. Once it fills up, those cells stop dividing again. So uh, the way external regulators work is that cells can basically sense when they're near other cells and they know to stop dividing. Now this is the way healthy cells work. The problem with cancer cells is that process has stopped functioning. Um, if we look at this diagram here, there's two different kinds of cancer cells. There's either benign tumors or there's malignant tumors. Uh, benign tumors are not cancerous because they don't spread to other tissue types. So what this is showing you here is there's different layers of tissue and the benign tumor doesn't spread out of the layer that it started in. The malignant tumor, however, begins spreading and getting larger. You can see here it's like spreading into blood vessels and uh, that's when it, it can begin to uh, do what's called metastasizing, when it moves to different places in the body. And uh, this is a problem because these cells can then start to uh, become so large that they're disrupting other cells and they're pushing good cells out of the way. If the tumor reaches a certain point, it can actually disrupt the function of the organ that it's growing inside of. So uh, malignant tumors are the problem. Those are the ones that are moving things out of the way. Another thing that it shows you here, these little red guys are supposed to be blood vessels. Oftentimes, uh, if you hear someone has an inoperable cancer, it's because the tumors become too vascular or maybe it's growing in a very important blood vessel and it's just become too hard to operate on. Uh, so not all cancer can just be removed as simply as like cutting it out. You know, something like this one could probably just be cut out since it's not growing into any blood vessels. But, you know, once it reaches a certain stage, a certain size, um, it's just not as easy to operate on those kinds of things. So um, all chapter long we've been talking about this process and how it's supposed to work. Cancer is basically what happens when things go wrong. And, uh, you know, unfortunately... Cancer has become such a prevalent thing in our society that most people have uh, some degree of, um, of experience with it, you know, whether it's uh, somebody you know or a family member or things like that. And I know that makes it sort of a sensitive topic, but I also think it's very valuable to understand things and to understand some things that can cause this and, you know, some possible treatments that we're looking at moving into the future. So hopefully this has been uh, something that's educational for you with a topic that's oftentimes frustrating and uh, somewhat hard to comprehend. So I always appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in class.